Hi, Dr. Ronald Lett from the Canadian Network for International Surgery. Chest injury as part of our trauma team training course. The three body cavities, the head, chest and abdomen are what cause a huge proportion of the deaths in trauma. Chest injury fits in with our primary survey. It is involved with B, breathing. So when we get to breathing and we're looking at respiratory rate and effort, we need to consider chest injury. Chest injury is common. It can be life-threatening. However, 90% of blunt chest injury trauma does not require open surgery. 80% of penetrating chest trauma does not require open surgery. Basic procedures can save lives. Oxygen, fluid resuscitation, and chest tube is all you need. Referral will be required only for the minority. Many chest injuries are not initially life-threatening, but will become so if ignored. Simple pneumothorax is frequently seen. It only requires a chest tube. But unfortunately, in many cases, patients arrive to an African emergency department, the diagnosis is not made, and they will go on to die when a simple insertion of a chest tube would be sufficient. Pulmonary contusion. The patient develops progressive respiratory distress. This is due to atelectasis with collapse of air cells, rib fractures with splinting from pain. Atelectasis results from the patient not moving that part of the lung. It requires analgesic, elastic band strapping, and perhaps some supplemental oxygen. More serious, open pneumothorax. There is an open wound. The lung is prevented from aerating because of this. So immediately you must close that wound with a thick gauze uh, reinforced with petroleum jelly and then insert a chest tube. This is necessary. Flail chest. When you have multiple rib fractures or cartilage fractures, they produce an unstable segment of the chest. It leads to paradoxical movement. That means when the patient inspires, the chest goes inwards. Oxygen is required. Often they will require assisted ventilation. This will be implemented in the case of respiratory distress. The reason for this need for ventilation is the problem of flail chest is associated with underlying lung contusion which can markedly exaggerate the hypoxia. Increasing hemothorax causes progressive collapse of the lung, decreased aeration, and is treated by chest tube. Massive hemothorax. You insert your chest tube. There's more than one and a half liters of blood in the pleural cavity. This happens with either penetrating or blood trauma. This results in shock. You need aggressive fluid transfusion, including blood. Autotransfusion, taking the blood from the pleural, pleural cavity and returning it to the patient is often life-saving. Urgent transfer is necessary if 1500 cc's are found at tube insertion, or if there is an ongoing loss of greater than 200 cc's every hour. Cardiac tamponade. This is when there is blood in the pericardial sac. The signs of tamponade include anxiety, hypotension, fainting, discomfort relieved by sitting up and leaning forward, distended neck veins. It's treated by pericardial synthesis. The pericardial sac is quite small. Aspiration of even 15 or 20 cc's of fluid can save life. Patients responding to successful pericardiocentesis need transfer for thoracotomy or pericardial window. Immediate death will occur with rupture of aorta, diaphragmatic rupture, esophageal injury, and myocardial damage. 
So, key points on chest injury. There are many serious injuries in trauma associated with chest injury, but most of these can be successfully treated with airway management, careful assessment, chest tube insertion, volume replacement, and intubation and ventilation. This concludes our lecture on chest injury. So just remember, resuscitation of the patient and one simple procedure, chest tube, will take care of 80 to 90% of chest injuries.